Welcome back, grade 11's Fjord. That was mammoth. So now we're going to just take a deep breath and we're going to carry on with the rest of this question. So it says here, calculate the magnitude of the normal force. Well, we've already, we found out what the expression is for the normal force. And this is what it was. We found out that it was, uh, so the normal force is equal to 490 minus 0.34F. Now this is easy because we, um, we've discovered what F is. That was that first question, that mammoth question, was discovering what F was. We found out that it was one, um, 182 comma, what was it, uh, 156 Newton. Okay, so we're just going to substitute in now. 0.34 and we substitute in that value which is 182 um, comma, one, five, six. Sorry, I'm squashed up here a little bit. Let me move over. And so that is going to give us an answer once we've used our calculator of 428,067 Newton. Fantastic. We know which way the normal is. So uh, we could leave it, um, leave the direction. Okay. Next question. Calculate the magnitude of the frictional force. Okay, the frictional force. So this is also pretty easy for us because our frictional force, we know what that is. So it's a kinetic frictional force and that is equal to the coefficient of friction, frictional force times by uh, the normal force. Now we've already discovered what the normal force is. We've just been asked to calculate that. And so all we're going to do is we're going to substitute in um, our mu value was given to us as 0 0.4 and we're going to times it by this uh, value that we have just calculated 428,067 newtons. Okay, if we pop that into the calculator and we get an answer of 171,227 newtons. Excellent. We want to say um, the direction of this, it is going to be opposite, opposite to motion, motion. Okay, very important. Okay, what now? They give us another question. The same constant force, F, is applied to the block over the same rough horizontal surface as before, but the direction has changed. Sorry, not directions, direction has changed. You can see here, look there, now it is a pushing force, it is not a pulling force. They are asking us to give us a reason why the block will move slower than before. Hmm, this is interesting. So if we look here, we can see, if we break it up, we can see that we've got a vertical component which is in the downward direction and the horizontal component is the same as before. There we go, it's the horizontal component. I'm going to change my pen, I want to show you the other one. So with the other one, it was up like that, and what did we have? We had the um, horizontal component, which looks the same, or looks similar, and we had a Vertical component. Have a look at the directions. Can you see that in the first one the vertical component was up and in the second question here, or well, the second situation when the force um, is acting in this direction um, into the block pushing it rather than pulling it, we've got a downward component. The vertical component is acting down. What does that mean? It means that we have got a normal force in this situation, which is going to be the force of gravity plus the vertical component. Why? Well, because our, down, um, our downward um, uh, force is the same as the upward force, so the normal force, but in the opposite direction. So what is, what is making up this downward um, component, it is the, or downward force, it is the force of gravity 
plus this vertical component which is added. Okay, because it's acting in the downward direction. So our normal force is being changed. So we need to say that the normal force, the normal force, the normal force is increasing, is increasing. What does that mean? Well, if the normal force is changing, it means that the frictional force is going to be changing. So therefore, the frictional force is also going to increase, is going to increase. What does that mean? That means it's going to be very difficult to move this block. And that is why the block is going to move slower. Grade 11s, let's see if we have uh, time to uh, tackle this problem. We don't have lots of time, but we can do parts of it. So this problem is um, two blocks put together. You can see it on the, um, on the screen. There's an eight kilogram block. You can see it's on a horizontal uh, surface and the four kilogram block is on a slope, okay? They tell us there that it is joined by an inelastic string of negligible mass. That just means it's not going to have any effect on what we're trying to work out. It runs over, over a frictionless pulley over there. Um, the one, the eight kilogram is on a horizontal surface. The four kilogram is on an inclined plane. You can see here it's 40 degrees. And there is a coefficient of friction. And they tell us that it is for both blocks. And it is at 0.2. And it tells us that this block accelerates. It is accelerating. Okay, so there is an acceleration. What are they asking us to do? State Newton's second law of motion in words. I'm sure by now um, you know that. So I'm not going to go through that. But that is going to give us um, an indication of where they're going, right? With... Um, uh, with the questions that they're going to ask us. When they talk about in words, they don't want the formula. So we know that the formula is F net equals MA. They don't want that. They want you to actually write it in words about um, the, the relationship between the force, the mass, and the acceleration. Okay, draw a labeled free body diagram of all the forces acting on the four kilogram block. So we'll do this. This is all we have time for. So here's our four kilogram block. There it is there, okay. It's on a slope. Uh, what are the forces acting on it? So we're going to draw the block as a dot. Here it is here. That's my kilogram block. We know that we've got a force of gravity working on it. So there is force of uh, gravity. Now, what else do we have? There's a string involved here, so there must be a tension force. Okay, so there is a tension force. So we're going to put the tension force there. Okay, tension force. We know that there is friction involved. How do we know that? They have told us that there is friction involved. They have given us a coefficient of kinetic friction. So we need to write that in. Now, what about that? Well, that is um, opposite to the direction of motion, and the direction of motion is in that direction, and so the frictional force is going to act in the opposite direction, so it's going to act at the slope or parallel to the slope, and so we need to indicate that. So our line goes from the dot, these lines can't touch, and there we go. So it goes from the dot, and that is my frictional force. I'm going to label it F K because I know it's kinetic. That's kinetic friction. This object is moving. Then what about the other forces acting on this block? Well, we have a normal force, don't we? We've got a normal force which is acting perpendicular to the surface there, and it is going to be um, a component. It's going to equal to the uh, perpendicular component of the uh, gravitational force. So we're going to place that in. And so there we go. There's the normal force over there. And we're going to write Fn or normal force. Right. 
Grain 11s, I hope that has helped you um, with how to solve these problems. Um, there will be uh, these questions um, on the, uh, the uh, MTN online school platform. Go ahead, go and look at them, practice them, and check out the answers. We will see you next time.